Wong, my son. This is Bernard Lee, my colleague. We are from Wong. And we are representing Park Royal on the Green. Uh, this project is an ongoing um, research and study on the high density, uh, high rise solutions, and also finding a striking, innovative, and integrated approach to um, integrated approach to uh, environmental, social sustainability, and also finding solutions that are suitable for our tropical region and, uh, and creating new. Spaces and typologies for um, for all uses. So just a little bit of history and orientation where we are. We are actually here in the obvious sense. This is the hotel site, and there's actually an urban park over here. You can see all this. This portion is all reclaimed land, and all this is the older fabric of the city. Um, but what is important for us is that uh, this is the site. The site is here, and this is the park. Uh, in 1876, uh, Chiang Hong Lim, a Chinese businessman, donated $3,000 to convert this into a public park. And at the time, it would be like Central Park of New York, giving uh, space for recreation to the people. In today's context, we want to do something similar. With the same spirit, we want to create park space in the building. We can't afford to put it on land, so we put it on the upper levels. So you can see this is the uh, historic uh, uh, district. Um, behind also, behind that is also Chinatown as well. This is in the fringe of Chinatown. And this is Hong Lim Green. It's actually named after the um, businessman who donated the money. So you can actually see we have actually drawn the garden upwards into the building. And in this case, what we have done is that we have created the same size of the park in the building. And also at the same time, we have been exploring how we can actually improve green replacement in our buildings. And in this case, we have, uh, in, in most of our projects, we have always attained 100%. Uh, in this case, we have achieved 200% of green replacement. So from that point of view, you look at a city, in the, uh, a building in the city, and we can actually replace with 200% of, of uh, greenery. I think it's, uh, it moves, uh, uh, it takes a giant step for uh, high density cities and in the tropics particularly. So the other aim too we wanted to do was to create a very unique selling point for the hotel and also for the client. And in this case, you can see how we have done so with the uh, with creating the gardens in the building. So you can see that in front is actually holding green and how we have actually created a building with podium that's inhibited by landscaping and also sky terraces in the upper levels that also have large gardens that can be seen from afar from the city. So the other thing we are also very um, concerned about is how we can actually, uh, from an urban design, uh, relate the scales to surrounding buildings. We have a very disparate um, a city where we have high rises and we also have heritage buildings. And in, in the tropics and in Singapore, there's also another thing that we need to relate to is mature trees. And this park, we have mature trees, and we wanted to relate the podium of our building to um, the, the height of the trees so that we can actually see above these trees when we are at the top of the podium. And you can see that the podium is at this uh, uh, sort of five stories, and when you're at that level, you can actually see right through, and you can see the building is actually very perforated. And in our climate, what we do need is actually very good cross ventilation and allow breezes to move through. And this building actually allows that so that if the, the public housing behind that actually do have the cross ventilation because they don't depend on air conditioning for comfort. So this is a section. You can see how porous it is. We have chosen not to build a basement. We did not build one because we don't think there was a sustainable way to do it. We actually elevated it here so that we actually can create pocket gardens that they can easily access and maintain this landscaping. So the inspiration, the starting point for the podium and aesthetics was really about uh, topographical, geological formations. In this case, we're looking at rocks, caves, ravines, uh, lagoons, including paddy fields and terraces and contours. So you can see this is actually the park on this side, and this is actually Upper Pickering Street. So this is actually the car 
RM to the car park. And uh, over here is the entrance of the hotel. And in this case, we create a very large uh, covered uh, entrance. And in this, this instance, this, this is actually not just a drop off, but it's actually used as an event space, sort of similar to a plaza in Europe. But in the tropics, when it rains and shines, we need a cover, but a sort of a brief, a brief way that allows you to move through it. So this is a good scene from afar. You can see waterfalls that uh, the public, not just the people in the hotel, but some uh, from people from far, from the park, they can actually see the waterfalls. And you can also see the public housing across, they can actually look into the gardens as well. So this is actually the ground floor. The ground floor is very, very narrow. It's actually 33 meters by 210. And we have actually, what we have done is that we have created um, as little uh, uh, rooms as possible. In fact, we tried to minimize the area. We had a very good client and hotel operator who understood what we were doing. By creating these gardens, we also are able to uh, create a very nice atmosphere and ambience for the spaces on the ground level, which was the, uh, the lobby and the audio gardens. So this is actually the covered walkway um, that runs all through the front of the site. And uh, you actually have a very nice covered glass canopy that prevents the wind from getting in, but you have this lofty cape like space, still with landscaping, and it's actually what the hotel uh, relates to and looks into. So this is again the street on the front. The drop-off space. So um, I just I'd like to say that we are actually responsible for the interiors as well, and our approach to the interiors has been a very integrated approach, so the architecture melts into the interiors. There's very little difference, very little separation between the interiors and exterior, indoor and outdoor. In this case, this is actually the entrance uh, lobby. You can see the cave-like uh, space has actually come into uh, the lobby space, the internal space. So from an architectural detailing, it actually comes into the interiors and transforms into interior detailing and interior contours. And a point to note too that on the ground floor, we decided that we actually will make it look like it's actually a stepping stone on landscape. So even the tiling pattern of the granite tiles floors are done in a way that it actually is uh, stepping stones. And we actually, uh, we actually uh, sort of merge them with a carpet that actually looks and uh, design like most. So the um, the contours on the inside for the interiors are actually made of uh, molded plywood. And as part of the, uh, the idea of turning the ground floor into a landscape, your stepping stone, this is a bridge to cross um, one section of the, uh, the hotel that leads you to the all day dining in the lift lobby. So it's a bridge that actually flows over water. And this is the all day dining. We have also created the uh, contours uh, in the ceiling and also we integrated lighting with the ceiling and we have used the uh, accurate mirror to dissolve all hard edges and to make the space a lot more fluid and romantic. The all day dining, which is at the other end of the reception lobby. And what we have done is because we have a very narrow site, we, we actually are able to get natural lighting uh, in through all the spaces, but we also wanted to reflect the landscaping into the inside. So a lot of mirrors are actually being used in the, in the walls that we needed to have, and it actually balances the light on both sides as well as bring the landscape right through the ground floor plane. And on the other end of the block, we actually have a public space, almost used as a beer garden. And all the little things in the buildings are always conceived as either pavilions or they are actually stone or timber uh, boxes. And in this case, this spiral staircase is connected to uh, so the first floor to the second floor. Is actually the construction is actually inspired by a Saudi Asian fishing net. lobby and the carpet here you can see 
The moss is actually reflected through a stainless steel, mirror stainless steel skirting. And again, the walls reflect the landscaping into the building. Likewise, the contours actually ends off in the mirror so that they actually look like they are full contours and yet at the same time you get the balance of light and uh, landscaping and interior spaces. So we just talk about the fifth level, which is here, sorry, which is this level. This level is almost a full floor plate. This is what we call the, uh, we term it the new ground level. And this is the kind of spaces that we create that's very suitable for the topic. It's actually higher <coughs> It's lofty enough that it's shaded and sheltered, and you can actually hold functions all the time. And in this case, it's actually event space as well as a swimming pool. And from the rooms looking down, you can actually see the swimming pools, and we have two pavilions one is for the gym, and one is for the spa. And these pavilions are designed as if they are flower buds uh, in the landscape. But this is actually quite a high-tech hotel, and that the, all the space is actually uh, Wi-Fi. It's quite interesting actually to see a businessman in suits in these pavilions on their computers. And this is the land, last landscaping that the, uh, or the fifth level that uh, the spa looks into. Just some of the ideas of the contours and terracing that is actually uh, coming across with an overflowing edge that becomes the, water, uh, the waterfall for people in the park to actually enjoy. This also included in the plan is actually a 300 meter walk around the whole fifth floor and you can actually walk under the waterfall, you can actually walk next to the landscaping and in, a cave, in, in one part you can walk inside the cave as well. So this is what the um, contours are being built, built of. They actually precast panels and also GRC for the ceilings. They are done in very modular radii as well as length. So it's actually a very simple uh, modular system for construction. But what we have done is that we have grouped them so that it actually um, uh, sort of uh, anticipate weathering. So the contours are actually landscaping as well as ceilings. So this is actually the car park ramp that goes up. It's like sort of horizontal cave that's actually cut into uh, the natural formation by wind. And on upper levels, you can actually see the ceilings too are done in the same way because when you look at the cave, it's actually also very nice when you look at the inside. So we will look at the upper levels. It's the, where we actually have all the rooms. And we have decided to go with a very simple as, uh, expression so that we actually will reflect the sky and let the uh, building dissolve. And the plan you can see, all the rooms actually look into the gardens. And the corridors, 50% of the corridors are not air conditioned. So we have been able to actually cut down on the air conditioned loading of the building. But it's also a very nice way to walk to your rooms. So these are the garden rooms. And this is a facade of the walkway behind, and this is what the public housing looks into. They actually look into very nice green walls. So at some point in the lobby, uh, lift lobby, you can actually see all the tiers of the sky gardens. And you can see how the landscaping on the upper level actually is like pulled up from the Park. And from the rooms itself, you can actually see the gardens. And we also have brought in the expression of the curtain walling into the inside to turn it into framing structures for furniture, lamps, and, and uh, colored cabinets. And with that, we have also been able to uh, incorporate universal design, uh, inclusive design, into the detailing of the interiors of the rooms. So these are the garden rooms, the bar, and even the handrails for the toilet. Lounge at the top that is 
the, uh, is all of the expression, <coughs> the architectural detailing, and the interior detailing comes together in a place. This is the rooftop. This project has actually attained Singapore's highest rating for sustainability, the Green Mark Platinum. And uh, just to highlight the, the fact that we actually introduce a lot of landscaping, we also want to create them such that they actually self-sustaining. So we're actually harvesting all the water to irrigate them by, uh, by gravity feed. And also we have uh, for, uh, PV cells in the roof to actually run the grow lights and also the irrigation system and the, the pumps for the waterfall. So some images of it at night.
which has a lift, and this core brings you up to the bib level and also brings you up to the guest room floor. So it's right in the middle, and you actually walk on both sides. And this straight side, these are the non-air conditioned corridors, so you come off the lobby and you actually walk through non-air conditioned spaces and then back into a lobby space where your uh, guest room block, uh, the guest rooms are. So it's a very straightforward plan. It's long and linear, but we put the main vertical circulation in the middle. And the total load of the soil? Yeah, because Actually, people think that the soil load is actually very heavy, including the trees. They're actually not, because when you design a structure, you design it for uh, a light load. And the light load is usually to 5 kilonewtons. And when you design for landscaping, you don't actually have this light load. So it's actually it's almost the same weight. But if you do want to create, put in larger trees, we do create a larger, uh, deeper depth for it. So we go to as deep as 1 meter, 1.5, and they are in localized areas. And so you have to breathe it in uh, where they are, because the, the, the trees do have to be strapped down, because so that they can actually handle stronger winds as well. So it's a, it's a complicated, uh, um, it looks simple, but there's actually uh, quite a lot of technical uh, consideration given to the process. In terms of um, shelter and sort of exposed surfaces, what sort of spaces, um, how do they work in terms of rotation and uh, wind and air movement? I think when you do have strong winds, which we don't have a lot, we only have very light breezes, and you welcome those breezes all the time. You know, whenever you can get a breeze, it's so nice to be outdoors. So when it does really rain with a heavy, strong gust of wind, unfortunately you can't use the space. Uh, you showed earlier this uh, section where you saw the water recycling. Is it the, only the water for, for uh, keeping the plants? Yes. Or does it include also the wastewater from no, the washout plants? It was not sufficient to, to do that. So because we created all these gardens, we wanted to make sure they were actually self -sustained. Do you have a cleaning uh, plant or anything for the hotel, or does it go into the sort of main city system? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions from the audience? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.